So lots of various companies are pretty bad for this, but I think Razor's the worst. We're kind of like two, three times a year, they're like, guys, we reinvented the wheel. Gaming's never gonna be the same. Creativity's never gonna be the same. Like, wow, I'm... and then like, it's, it's a pink blade or something like that. And you're just like, guys, cool, I guess, but why? N no, that's not the level of hype. But here, <laughs> they might actually have something. Like, it's the new Razer Book 13. Terrible name, guys. You couldn't think of anything? Like, whatever. It looks pretty sweet, though. <laughs> Let's get into it. All right. That's an interesting... Oh! Is that the power brick? Wow, 65 watts in... This size right here is actually pretty impressive. It seems like it's just a standard charger. I was wondering if it was like gallium nitrite, but I guess not. This is a pre-production unit, so we aren't allowed to run benchmarks on it or whatever, but eh, we weren't going to anyway. All right, only a couple little scuffs now, but <laughs> I don't, ooh, a lot of scuffs actually. Oh, it's fine, they're coming off. Pre-production marks aside though, this thing feels and looks great. It just has the, I don't know, razor stiffness, I guess you could call it. It's all aluminum, CNC machined, and just generally feels great. Has that almost like Apple feel about it. You know how they're just super solid? I guess Razer has always had that as well. Just a nice, very tame Razer logo on the back. See that there? Oh yeah. It's not their typical like straight gamer stuff, which I appreciate in this. It's not RGB. Yeah, no RGB. So you get a full size type A, awesome. That's the sort of thing that's just such a pain if you're using like an XPS 13. You have Thunderbolt on this side, Thunderbolt on the other side, so you can, you know, charge from both sides of the laptop. Awesome. Then we have what? Full-sized HDMI. And my only complaint here is that it's a micro SD card instead of full-size. They probably just didn't have the space though. And on something this size, I'm not really gonna complain. So I guess we just go ahead and turn it on. But first, I'm gonna turn you on to our sponsor. I fix it. <laughs> Thanks to iFixit for sponsoring today's video. iFixit's Black Friday deals start now and it's the perfect time of year to start your iFixit tool collection or give them as gifts. Can't wrap gifts? No problem. Right now, take $10 off the ProTech bundle and $50 off the Ultimate iFixit kit. Head to iFixit.com slash Linus and use code CIRCUIT10 for another $10 off. Hurry, the code expires December 1st. Oh, there's the RGB. They, there's no way that Razer could, you know, make a computer and just leave it boring. This one that we have right here is the 1920 by 1200. So it's a 16 by 10 display. This is the one thing that I thought Razer probably would get wrong. They'd be like, it's a productivity machine, but like with gaming display and stuff or whatever. Like I figured they go kind of just the blade stealth route and not fully commit. This extra bit right here is so nice though. And it really just adds that like modern look to it. Just that nice little it also feels surprisingly heavy. Like it's not, it's just under three pounds. Actually just under three pounds is kind of heavy. It's like really dense. Like when you hold it, it has that real just block of aluminum feel. So if you look here, there's absolutely no flex in the chassis at all. Like I'm just, I'm pushing really hard right now. One thing that is interesting about this screen is that it has Gorilla Glass on it. So you can, I'm not gonna do anything that would scratch it, but. <laughs> The things that would scratch other laptop screens are not going to scratch this one nearly as easily. There is a version with their i5 model that doesn't have touch. Wouldn't necessarily recommend getting that one. And there's also a 4K touch model, which I also probably wouldn't recommend. Like this is plenty sharp. I can bring it right about here. I can start seeing pixels and I don't know, I'm not doing this very often. So this right here has an Intel Core i7 1165G7 that gets you four cores, this is one of the Tiger-like guys. Along with that, we have 16 gigabytes of RAM. I believe that that's all soldered. We'll find that out in a bit. A, oh, 240 gigabyte SSD. I would want to see at least 512. And then, yeah, the Iris XE graphics, which, you know, if you actually want to game, get a Razer Blade 15. Probably just completely skip the Blade Stealth especially since now this thing right here is going to deliver not the same, but a very similar gaming experience to what you get on the Stealth because the Intel XE graphics are quite good. I am hoping to... Oh, okay, first big problem, small backspace. You'll probably get used to it, but that's, <gasps> why? Right. That said, I'm not super concerned about it. You will get used to that after being really mad for a week or two. 
don't know how I feel about this, if I'm honest. It's good, but I don't know if it's great. It seems like the problem is, is that the top of the key is a lot more like, it has a lot of give, whereas the bottom of the key has a nice snap to it. So if you're hitting the bottom of the key, it's fine. But if you're doing something like coming across, oh no, some, so like Z, it's totally fine there. Like you press the top and it just actuates. But if you look like Q, you're already hitting like the chassis before the key's actuating. So they're not quite consistent. So some of them like J here, J is a great key. You could hit J all day long. Yeah, they're just inconsistent. <laughs> okay, let's type on it for like a minute and then I'll get back to you if I still don't really like it. Yep, uh, that's what, like maybe a B plus. I think Linus might enjoy it more. He kind of likes the older Razer laptop keyboards, which I hated. So your mileage might vary, but I think it's safe to say that it, it doesn't quite stack up to like the Dells or the HPs in a similar form factor. As for the trackpad though, that's at least a bright point on this. Um, it's the kind of trackpad that you sort of just don't really think about because it just does what you want it to do and is like they're maximizing their space up here. Really no complaints for that. Okay, we're gonna try and do the classic synced crab rave. Yeah, that's it. That's all you're getting. What? Okay, we're... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you got wrecked, Razor. That's, that's hilariously bad. Um, <laughs> that's, that's not a 2020 speaker setup in a, what is this, $1,800 laptop or something? Let's find that out. All right, $1,599.99 gets you the speakers of a $600 laptop. <laughs> I imagine at least the battery is pretty good. So it's 55 watt hours. You're going to get, what, a new Intel, probably like nine, 10 hours, something like that. That said, you can still get that in much cheaper laptops. The layout in here though is really nice. You just get your SSD that you can take out. You don't get access to the RAM, but whatever. I don't really expect that in laptops like this. Now we have this nice big old vapor chamber that just kind of goes, all the way around here. I don't know that we've seen a vapor chamber in a thin and light yet. They're just kind of, they're taking over everything. It's friggin' sweet. That does mean though that like your Intel XE graphics and stuff are probably going to run probably the best out of all of the laptops around on this guy, just because of that extra cooling. Intel is really good in their mobile designs for just extracting every single last little watt that they can out of your cooling and VRM system. So I imagine this right here will be among, if not the fastest, like little 13 inch laptops that you can get. I guess that's about it. I'm kind of torn on this. Like Razer got everything that everyone else gets wrong right. Like in this tiny laptop, they got they got great IO. The IO is awesome. Cooling, excellent. Big old battery. They have the 16 by 10 display. They have everything that I would expect them to totally screw up. Oh, Windows facial recognition, they also have that. But they just kind of lost it with the keyboard for me personally. Like if you're using a laptop like this, what you're going to be doing most of the time, I think is like answering emails, writing in Word documents, watching crabs dance. You can do that very well on this actually. Excel spreadsheets. All of that's going to be fine, but could be better just because of that keyboard and the speakers are pretty disappointing as well. I really want to see a Razorbook version two with a better keyboard and a brighter screen and better speakers. And then I'll probably use it every single day. Anyway, I hope that you guys have a great old day. I get subscribed to Short Circuit, uh, I get subscribed to LTT and I don't know, go buy something from a local business. They're not doing too great right now. See you later.